Hi, I'm Samantha. I've been a registered nurse since 2009, working in mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC, I'm maternal newborn nursing certified, and I have received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as well as perinatal bereavement. Today is part one of our infant sleep series, bedtime routines and sleep tips. Sleep is crucial for both parents and babies. Without proper rest, your baby's growth and development can be affected, not to mention how exhausted you feel without a proper night's rest. So grab a cup of coffee and let's explore why bedtime routines are so important and how to get them started. One of the most important signals for the human brain to determine it's time for sleep is the reduction of light as the sun goes down. Our brains associate light with wake and dark with sleep. This is an association you want to teach to your baby early on. It starts with naps. Many parents go to extreme lengths to keep their babies asleep during nap time. This can include a silent house and a dark room. These two things do promote sleep, but it can create confusion for the newborn to tell the difference between day and night. The result is a baby who gets up throughout the day and throughout the night. Starting young, you want to teach your baby to sleep in rooms full of light or at least dimmed while napping. You also want to get them used to the sound while sleeping during the day. At first, your baby will have to get used to this. Since newborns like to sleep a lot, it's usually pretty easy, especially if you start from day one. The result is a baby's brain associating daytime with light and activity. At night, calming the environment down with dark rooms and quiet sounds like white noise teaches your baby it's time for sleep, which is a big step towards sleep success. Finally, Make sure to bump the temperature in your house down a few degrees at night. Humans sleep better when the ambient temperature is slightly cooler. This is because as the sun sets, the earth gets cooler. Another signal that it's time for bed. As with any bedtime routine or sleep schedule, you need to know what time the right time is to start. If you put your baby down an hour before they are ready to sleep, you will be fighting with them for an hour. Keep a sleep log for a week. Mark down when your baby wakes and sleeps at night. This helps you realize what time they are naturally ready for bed. Additionally, mark down when they are sending you the signals that they are sleepy, which prompt you to start your bedtime routine. This can include yawning, rubbing eyes, and fussiness. Track what time you start your bedtime routine and how long it takes for the baby to fall asleep when you put them down. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about the right time to get started with a bedtime routine. Establishing good sleep habits or an effective bedtime routine requires consistency. This means parents need to commit to this change for at least a week. Many routines will take a month or more to become successful. You should make sure to check the calendar for any conflicts to this consistency. You don't want to start a new sleep routine if you have guests coming into town a week later or if you have a party to go to. Additionally, you should not start a sleep routine if your baby has a minor illness like a cold or if they're about to get an immunization. These things can throw off the routine as well because your baby may not be feeling well. Consistency is key because otherwise your efforts can be in vain after one night straying from the routine. Your child will be able to adapt to their bedtime routine as they get older. Finally, many parents choose to start their bedtime routine on a Friday night so they can survive a couple sleep deprived nights as their baby gets used to the new normal. Honestly, Anything can be part of your bedtime routine. 
However, the bedtime routine should include both caregivers if there is more than one in the house so that the baby gets used to going to sleep with more than one person. If you are breastfeeding and part of the routine is a nighttime feeding, it's ideal to teach your baby to take a bottle so that on the nights you aren't part of the routine, someone else can feed the baby. Most parents start their routine with a bath at night. However, your bedtime routine can start with anything you want. What's important is wherever the starting point is, each activity after that happens every night in the same exact order, and that order leads to going to sleep. An example of this could be dinner, bath, pajamas, singing, story time, last feeding, and then bed. It's ideal to start with the steps that have the most activity and then progressively become more and more relaxing. Whatever your routine looks like, make sure the environment starts to induce those sleep signals as well by dimming the lights, reducing the sounds, and dropping the temperature. The most important part of this routine is at the end, place your baby in bed awake. Many parents are concerned about how to successfully get their babies to sleep if they are leaving them awake in their bed. Babies are capable of self-soothing, but they need to practice this skill. A baby that successfully learns to self-soothe becomes a child that can also self-soothe. The result is a better sleeper. However, this doesn't happen from the first night. Babies who are drowsy and ready for bed when they are put in the crib may still cry a bit. Fussiness or crying is a part of the process. The hope is with a good bedtime routine and proper sleep hygiene, this will be minimized. It's important to give your baby a few minutes to try and self-soothe independently, even in the middle of the night. Otherwise, if you're rushing in at the slightest cry, they will learn that that's all they need to do to interrupt the sleep process. Many parents will also seek out a sleep training method to assist with the baby learning to self-soothe. Parents often get nervous when they hear sleep training because they assume that they must listen to their baby cry for hours every night. That is simply not true. Many newer sleep training approaches follow gentler techniques designed to minimize crying. Part two of our series will focus on the common infant sleep training methods and how to use them. Babies should still nap as normal during the day, even when establishing a bedtime routine and sleep schedule. Babies need a lot of sleep during the first year of life, and napping is a part of that process. Additionally, pacifiers can be a great self-soothing tool to establish good sleep habits. Pacifiers are recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics during sleep because they reduce the risk of SIDS. The only caveat is to wait to use a pacifier until breastfeeding is established, which is usually two to three weeks after birth. Your baby should use a pacifier during sleep only. Getting rid of swaddles also helps. When your baby's hands are free, they can use their hands and fingers to self-soothe, which is what they did in utero. Babies should sleep in the same room as parents until six months of age, but that doesn't mean you can't have a sleep routine. Sleep routines can also work if your baby shares a room with an older sibling. However, the sibling may need to move out of the room for a few weeks until the routine is established. If you have any health concerns about trying a sleep routine, be sure to talk with your pediatrician before starting. If your baby is throwing up, coughing, or snoring at night, you need to see your pediatrician so they can examine your baby and discuss any additional steps that need to be taken. No matter whether you choose to sleep train or not, it's extremely important to make sure your baby is safe while sleeping. This helps reduce the risk of SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome. Unfortunately, the cause of SIDS remains unknown, but studies have shown that safe sleep practices dramatically reduces a baby's risk of SIDS. The American Academy of Pediatrics, or APA, recommends all parents use the following practices when placing their baby to bed. Place your baby to sleep on their back every time they sleep, including naps. Many parents of older babies will say, but she rolls on her stomach. That's okay. 
Once a baby can roll onto their stomach or side independently, they are safe to sleep in that position, but they should be adjusting themselves. Always place your baby to sleep on their back. Make sure the crib mattress is firm and when possible, replace the mattress for each baby you have. There should be no loose, soft items in the crib. This includes blankets, pillows, stuffed animals, sleep positioners, bumpers, burp cloths, mittens, hats, and any other items made of a soft material that a baby might choke on. Make sure your baby doesn't get too hot because overheating is a real risk for babies. If you prefer your house to be warm at night, your baby should only need to sleep in a regular sleeper for bedtime. If you prefer your house cooler, place the baby in a warmer sleeper, possibly with a onesie and socks underneath it. Babies should never be placed to sleep with hat, mittens, or blanket because these are not only increase the risk of overheating, which has been linked to SIDS, but also provide choking hazards and suffocation hazards. Remember to use a pacifier. Now, if you're not in favor of using a pacifier, consider it for sleep only and don't use it anytime your baby is awake. Share a room with your baby until they are six months of age, but bed sharing or co-sleeping should be avoided due to risks of suffocation. You should avoid using drugs, alcohol, and tobacco products. Many parents think if they smoke outside the house, this eliminates the exposure to the baby. Third hand smoke exposure is when infants are exposed to toxic chemicals from tobacco through their caregiver's clothing. Even small amounts of toxic exposure increases your baby's risk for SIDS and other serious health conditions. Talk with your healthcare provider about finding options to help you quit smoking, not only for your health, but the health of your baby. Finally, the APA recommends all babies receive their childhood vaccines to reduce the risk of SIDS. Sleep is crucial to newborn development and parental mental health and satisfaction. Utilizing a good bedtime routine and proper sleep hygiene can assist your baby to become a good sleeper at night. Not just now, but long into the future. I hope this has explained why a bedtime routine is so important and how to get started. Remember to tune in to part two of our sleep series where we explore the top sleep training techniques and how to use them. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.